Now that we've seen some examples of categories, we're actually going to define what a category is. So, a category, which we might name, say, curly A, uh, has, all right, so it has a collection of objects, so objects, often denoted by capital letters. Um, now, note that I said a collection of objects, not a set of objects. It's very often the case that the collection of objects in a category forms a proper class. For example, the categories that we have looked at, set, group, and top, uh, are all instances where the collection of objects doesn't form a set. Um, and people often write, let's say these are contained in the collection of objects of our category A. Um, and they might even leave out this and just write that they're contained in A. All right, next we have, for each pair of objects, we have, we have a set of morphisms. Uh, so we'll write our set of morphisms between two objects, say X and Y, as either HOM, and we might denote the category here, from X to Y, or you might see this notation. So the morphisms in the category a from X to Y. I'm going to try and stick to this notation uh, just for brevity. All right, so we have objects, we have morphisms. The next thing we talked about when we were going through our examples of categories was composition. So we have a composition law. So whenever you have two morphisms, such that the codomain of one of them is the domain of the other, you need to be able to define a composition. So the composition law is a function for each triple of objects, say x, y, z, going from the Cartesian product of the um, HOM sets from y to z, X to Y, and it takes that to the, the set of morphisms from X to Z, and it does it by taking, say, G here, so we have a pair GF, and it takes it to G composed with F. Now note that I've left out the triple here, that basically never gets used. Um, and in fact, I'm generally just going to write this as GF and leave out the composition symbol. All right. Um, so, our composition law needs to satisfy some things. First, it needs to be associative. So that is, if you compose uh, H, G, and F. So, recall that the domain of G has to be the codomain of F, and the domain of H has to be the codomain of G, so that this is well defined. In which case, you should al it should also be well defined if you do the bracketing or parentheses in the other order. And we want these two to be equal. So this is associativity. And finally, for each object, we have a distinguished morphism, the identity. So, identities. All right, so say the object that we're considering is X. We have an identity IDX, um, which you might also see written as 1X. And that's going to be a morphism from X to itself such that um, if you compose it with any other morphism, you get back that same morphism. 
obviously you can only do the composition where it's well defined. Um, all right, and that's what a category is.